Hey, hello there. Yes, I am an electrical engineer. Yes, I want to be a software developer. What do I need to do? Hey everyone, this is me Rachet. Um, I was really very much worried. I used to be really very much worried when I was in my university and I wanted to make that switch from electrical to software engineering. And it's been a pretty rough ride to be honest with a lot of hardships. And there was no one, no one to tell me what exactly I need to follow. Do I need to maintain my CGPA? What, what are the things that I should do to finally get that job or finally get started with shaping my career towards software engineering, right? And this video is about me giving you guys back the learnings and the experiences that I have gained so far from finally getting rid of that and finally working with huge brands like Microsoft, Tower Research, Flipkart. I hope this will be useful and let's get started. Today I won't be representing Microsoft or Tower Research or IIT Roorkee. I just want to share my experiences and my learnings and this is what I would have told myself if I could go back in time. So before we start the video, let's hear the message from our sponsors. Today's video is being sponsored by Daily Coding Platform. It's a great tool which you can use to prepare for your coding interviews and their business model is also something which you will really love. So what they do is Every day they send you one problem in your mail this is asked around in Google, Facebook or Amazon interviews and they send these problems daily to you so that you can prepare for coding interviews. So it's, it's kind of like a reality check. You can read those questions and try to analyze your skills, how much you are aware of the current problems which are asked in coding interviews and whether you are doing good or not. They do this all for free and if you also want the solutions and tutorials for those problems, you can simply buy their product if you love that and it's super cheap, only $7 a month. And of course, if you will use my coupon Rachet, you will get a discount. So check that out. Crack, to crack really good product based companies or really high paying jobs, you need to stand out from the crowd in your college. Because when companies come, they the, you have a competition with the students in your college. So you need to ensure that you have some identity, some strong identity that you have created from your resume uh, throughout your college journey. And you can basically compete with the computer science students despite not having that education. So how to do this is nothing fancy, but you have to do work. You have to work hard. There is no shortcut to this that someday there is some fairy tale that's coming to your life. It's not going to work like that. You have to work. It boils down to only two or three things. You got to be strong in data structures and algorithms because that's what companies ask you because when companies are coming to hire you, they really don't expect freshers to know a lot of web development or design web services or handle scale. They really want to ensure that they are really great with data structures and algorithms so that they can test the logical skills and the logical reasoning of the candidate that they are hiring. It's a great and for them, it's the best way to evaluate students. I don't want to get into that, whether this is right or wrong, but this is currently how hiring works in all the good companies. So you got to be strong in data structures and algorithm. Also, you need to ensure that you are great in operating systems as well as networking. So talking about my case, I was really, really good at data structures and algorithms, but I was not that good in networking. Okay. But I was pretty good in operating system concepts also. Courses wise, data structures, algorithms, operating system. These are some courses which you should definitely check them out. Maybe on YouTube or maybe you can take an ordered course in your computer science department. That also happens. And I was not aware for it for a long time. Like if you are from electrical engineering, you can audit courses or you can attend courses as extra burden but you can attend courses from computer science also. That's also possible. So check that out. Ask in your college if that's happening and if it's, then it's pretty good for you to be in contact with some computer science professor and also clear your doubts because all the students are studying that, right? If you are from really good college, then maybe Microsoft, Amazon, Google, visit your camp. Great opportunity that you have got. So if your skills are really great, if your data structures algorithm skills are really great, you will be able to crack all the shortlisting test and also you will be able to come into the interviews. And if you are really good, you can solve that problem as well. You will be finally hired. But what if your resume is also not shortlisted? So if you're having low CGPA and you are from electrical engineering and you have no project in computer science related area, you have never worked as an intern in some software company, or uh, let's say you don't have any project or any website that you have developed yourself, then you won't be even shortlisted. So that depends. And the best way to get rid of that is have a very strong resume. And that can only happen if you have used your time judiciously. Have a good CGPA that tells that you are sincere. You're not just messing around with your time. You are sincere. That represents something when it comes 
to looking at your resume have a good resume you should have done some something in your resume which is related to software engineering so in my case i had done internships twice i did internship in grofers which is an e-commerce kind of thing and then i did in flipkart which is again e-commerce and in both of them i really learned a lot also about software engineering how to build web services how to handle authentication and all those kind of things which are some of the things which you will never learn if you don't do it yourself and all these jargon words are garbage if you just hear them like this you have to go deep into that just implement things and just get rid of it okay so be in that mindset wherein when you are hearing things you definitely go and check them out do work on that understand how it's working just implement them once and then get rid of that in this way your mind is able to process those things like in a very good way so if you are uh, so if you are hearing about uh, internships or you are hearing about software projects just go and start doing them okay for that you need to understand some programming language that's a basic necessity if you have never done any programming course then it will be a bit tough for you but you have to do that so you have to go over that journey if you want to be a software engineer start with it instead of procrastinating things that how will we do this these questions will and even more questions will pop in your mind but you have to just throw them out of your way and start doing things just start doing things you have you should have a good laptop i would say and a good internet connection if that's there you can do a lot it's just about removing that shell which is stopping you from do, doing all those things what we have discussed so far is data structures and algorithms are very important then if companies are coming in your college and you're not from computer science you need to be shortlisted and for that you need to have a good cgpa then also you need to have a good resume you should have something which is not related to electrical engineering or mechanical engineering but your resume should be filled up with software engineering related things so for example in my case i had done that i have done internships in grofers i have done an internship in flipkart i was also in the coding society of my college which is img information management group which is a bunch of developers which we hired from college itself i mean they are students but they become developers because we do all kinds of development things so over there also i did a lot of projects like i built an android app bunko meter which you can check out on play store it it was just a way wherein students can basically store their timetable so the app also enabled the users or the students to save their timetable so i am a student i have created timetable i can say save it and then it gets saved not on the android phone but in the database of my server okay and once that happens i can have a lot of other students who can just copy the timetable of that student so it was just a timetable sharing app so that if one student created other can simply fetch it or copy it in that sense also my resume was covered up with a lot of projects related to software engineering which gave me a huge plus point that even though i am an electrical engineer i am using my time judiciously i have a good cgp i have software engineering related work i have worked with flipkart and grofers which which are of course really good brands when it comes to software engineering career so in that sense this gives an edge so that people are interested in shortlisting me and also interviewing me and then i had a very strong background in data structures and algorithms which has been super useful to me to be honest it's it's kind of a power that empowers you to basically even switch companies if you want let's say you are not able to crack google or you go to some startup let's say you are not able you are not in good shape in your college you were a bit late and you were not able to crack google or microsoft or something like that then what will you survive your whole life in that company no right you will make that switch and if you have to make that switch you need to be smart and consistent in data structures and algorithms so that's something which also helped me uh, switch my job from microsoft to tower research because those skills were again tested in the interviews so don't be in a state wherein you are feeling that i have just lost my time because life is not ending just in college you have a lot to do even after that time so do the right steps now okay be consistent with data structures and algorithms be really strong with that have a good resume like really really good resume which speaks for you that you are not from electrical or mechanical now okay you are doing computer science stuff and your resume should speak for that so now let's talk about how you can do all those things so when it comes to data structures and algorithms i will say competitive programming is really an overkill for it because if you are starting a fresh you have to do so many things that i have discussed in the past 10 minutes so doing competitive programming just for data structures and algorithms is really an overkill for it and um so what i would say is over here try to understand things try to understand what is asked in interviews and for that i would say algo expert and daily coding problem can be really useful for to you algo expert is nothing but uh, you can say startup which is founded by employees from google and uber in which they discuss 65 problems 
Okay. So, for every problem they have a video wherein they explain the solution and in those 65 videos they have covered an entire range of topics or categories like strings, dynamic programming, graph traversals and other things like that. So that once you are watching those videos you understand all the terms or all the necessary skills which you need to clear interviews or what you can be asked in interviews. So in that sense 65 videos can be covered quite fast and it will also give you a perspective about what exactly are, what exactly are the questions or what kind of questions are asked in Google, Facebook and all those kind of things. So do that very fast and then you can move to lead code or practice on code forces. Like you can go to lead code and code forces. They have tons and hundreds and thousands of problems. The only problem is that that you have so much to do and who is telling that what to do and what not to do. Right. So with the Algo Expert, the 65 videos, you get revamped very quickly and then you can move to all these platforms where you can practice some particular skill that you are weak at. Maybe you are weak at dynamic programming. So you can go to lead code, select problems just on dynamic programming and practice that. So do that as soon as possible and do it every day with consistency and intensity. So once you do that, I would say you can also join daily coding problem. So daily coding problem, as I have talked before, um, you get problems in your mail every day you get one problem which is some question which is asked in Google or Facebook or Amazon interviews and once you get that question you can simply think about the solution for the day and the next day you will get solution for that and it's a great way to keep yourself in a reality check as in how you are progressing towards interview the, and how you are performing against the questions which are generally asked nowadays in interviews so that's a good reality check to see how we are doing and whether we are improving to cracking interviews or not. So check that out and also uh, in both of these cases use Rachita's coupon code if you like discounts. I think everyone loves to save some money. So go to algoexpert.io slash Rachit and dailycodingproblem.com slash Rachit to know more. Okay. Okay, so data structures and algorithms is now off the table. Now coming to building your resume and doing internships. Again, so when you're doing your first internship, it will be really difficult to uh, convince them that yeah of course you are from software engineering side now so for that you need to have some personal projects so i would say um, when it comes to software engineering there are two roles one is back end and one is front end front end is something like you are watching youtube you are watching my face and all those things so that's the front end some front end developers must have worked to basically show what you are seeing right now and then this data is coming from some back end server okay that is back end developers job so the front end talks with back end to load data so that the viewers can see what they are seeing Okay, this is what software engineering is about in a nutshell. So you can have two roles, but I would say start with front end as it's fun to develop, like you are making things, you are seeing them. So it's kind of fun activity to get started with. So for that, what I would suggest you is first understand HTML, CSS, JavaScript and jQuery. Very easy to do in just two or three weeks. Simply go to W3 schools and I will tell you that you won't be disappointed. Simply go over there and understand how that works. Once you have done that, I would say create your personal website. It's a good exercise to finally use those skills and build something which you can also show to the outer world as a convincing pillar that you are not from electrical or mechanical side. You are moving your career towards software engineering side. So build your website. So to do that, you can basically learn react but that might be an overkill if you are really fresher but you can create your own website by using wordpress or you can code it yourself by using html css and javascript and jquery so do a bit of googling over there whatever suits you if you feel you are confident you can learn more go with react and build your front end of your website you can also check out some uh, you can also check out the portfolios or online websites of some other people to get some ideas and get started with that and you have some other projects that you have done you can simply have that in your resume so that you can convince people or you can convince companies to get you that internship and really it will be awesome learning for you and again it's getting back in your resume so that you can convince later on in your placement time or maybe when you are applying for jobs that i really want to be a software developer and this is what i have been doing right so in this way i feel you will be doing really well to get your short to get your resume shortlisted you have good cgpa and if not you should have a lot of projects and convincible internship experiences so focus on that and then once your resume is shortlisted you have the data success and algorithm skills for which you will be tested you can really crack great coding jobs so i hope this video was fun you learned why cgpa and internship experiences are important and finally, how data structures and algorithms is the crux behind cracking those interviews because that's what you will be judged for when you are a fresher. So yeah, guys, that's all about it. And this is what happened with me. I did internship. Exp I, I did had internship experience with Flipkart and Grofers. I really had a good CGPA close to nine. 
and also i was very very skilled with data structures and algorithms the combination of all these things really resulted in a great r- resume for which i was also shortlisted and also i got a job offer from microsoft without having a bachelor's degree in computer science so guys this was my journey i hope you got inspired i hope this helped you gain more clarity don't be afraid of just your uh, electrical or mechanical identity work to remove that and finally enter the software side if you want to be a software developer of course anyways guys i this video was fun for me to film as well and i'll see you next time till then bye